Hello viewers and welcome to the Second Korean War. I'm your host, Pupuju Chu, and welcome back to Wargame Red Dragon for a third time, folks. And as promised, today we're playing the fifth campaign present inside the game added in the form of a DLC. And this is a, apparently a very hard campaign. It's a, it's a, it's a blue four versus red four campaign in the strictest sense. And as you can tell by the, uh, the little flag icons and there, and there, it's, uh, yeah, it's practically a east versus west type of thing, excluding some of the, um, the Scandinavian countries and the eastern bloc countries there. So, um, overhaul, let's begin, and let's see what is the backlog, or the, you know, the backstory to this bit of history inside the war game, yeah, the war game world here. November 9th, 1989. The Iron Curtain cracks apart, while Soviet troops in Germany remain in their barracks on Mikhail Gorbachev's direct orders. 1991, when the Warsaw Pact is disbanded, influential party, army, and KGB members concerned about an imminent dissolution of the Soviet Union decide to overthrow Gorbachev. August 18th to the 19th, 1991. Activating a state emergency plan, the rebellion leaders arrest Gorbachev, Yeltsin, several liberal deputies, and anyone suspected of opposing the coup. August 21st, 1991, a state committee of the state of emergency, composed of the Putsch leaders, is created to manage the country. End of August, 1991. Although the defection of former Warsaw Pact members can be undone, the strategic naval bases in the Baltic states are quickly and violently reoccupied. Autumn 1991, left almost alone to face NATO in Europe, the USSR initiates a diplomatic switch towards its last communist neighbors, China and North Korea. Early 1992, in order to seal the new friendship with its Asian allies, the USSR agrees to secret deliveries of some of its most advanced weaponry. April 1992, the military buildup in Asia has not gone unnoticed among UN troops. Units are put on high alert along the DMZ, and the USS Enterprise is sent to patrol the Sea of Japan. April 15, 1992. An explosion of unknown origin strikes the USS Enterprise's stern, rendering her motionless, while a Soviet squadron is sailing in her direction. Alright, so I guess that is the start of the campaign, and again, I'm probably not going to read these messages to you guys, you can probably read them yourself. So, uh, USS, USS Enterprise 2, USS, or yeah, US forces in Korea, we are under attack, oh no. Um, Russian ships are apparently advancing on our position, looks like we're starting off with a NATO battle to, um, to add to the stakes of this campaign and yeah it looks like we have yeah the USS Enterprise is in danger and we must um, try to protect it till it can escape uh, so let's see what this is all about so this is somebody from Pacific Command the USS Enterprise must be saved and first you must uh, well fight one coming battle which will be quite dangerous um so this is yeah this is a really nice way to start the campaign it looks like we're playing on the no, uh, Korean map once again though I imagine that it's uh, extended to an extent and it looks like, yeah, I guess uh, we're fighting a naval battle just to um, determine the fate of one of the initial pieces of our arsenal here. So yeah, um, same in, in general, like very similar map to what we've seen before. And yeah, it looks like the game is scripted to start off a battle over here. So um, I don't think I need to summarize how we play this game again, though so just uh, just doing that briefly. I know it's kind of counterintuitive. Um, there's a strategical and a tactical side to the to the game, of course, inside the campaign mode. We fight through these individual battles using the formations, which bring their own planes and equipment, which are listed down here into the fight inside one of these zones. If we win the battle, or rather, if we lose the battle, either way, losses will be taken um, into account on the side menus over here. And, of course, afterwards, depending on who wins or who loses, different things can happen over that. So, um, starting off, I guess we are just scripted to 
either uh, we're, we'll fight a very challenging battle over here and to uh, really start off like that so we have the USS Enterprise is uh, supporting ships because we don't get the uh, the actual carriers unfortunately and two squadrons of uh, looks like Super Hornets and Tomcats so that'll be uh, very fun to play with and seeing as how this is the most uh, forward facing war you know um, yeah the uh, the, the latest campaign, the war game line of stuff, we get to, uh, of course, see a lot of the advanced units inside the campaign. Um, it looks like the Russians at all were red for, they're bringing some MiGs, so that's expected, some SU-27Ks for their airplanes, and they're bringing in four uh, of these capital ships going up against our one Congo. So this will be a very challenging fight, though it will be quite rewarding if, we'll, uh, if we're able to pull this off and we're able to win this battle over here. So let's see what happens. Um, starting off, I mean, uh, I think we've, I don't know, we saw a few campaign, or a, yeah, a few campaign naval battles previously, though for this one, I think we'll try something um, slightly different over here. So it looks like, yeah, we get a lot of area to deploy. The, um, the red for people they don't get too many and here's what I'm thinking of doing I'm gonna get the con the uh, the Congo here to go nice front and center inside Delta I think we'll get it some support ships so some um, some of these champ suries to protect it from missiles here and it doesn't look like we can afford any of the airplanes just yet so I think I'll arm them with perhaps a Pegasus over here to um, to fire off missiles. Oh, but I think I'm getting ahead of ourselves here. Checking out our um, different units as we've done pre previously. We have some, we have some Tomcats, some really really good uh, anti-plane or you know anti-aircraft uh, aircraft rather. There we have some of these Super Hornets, which carry those uh, radar-guided missiles. Two of them, in fact, which go up against uh, ships. We have a few logistics craft. Actually, I think I'll trade out the Pegasus for the uh, the logistics craft here because we do want to. Um, have a nice supply of missiles over here. And we have some Oliver Hazard Parries, some nice middle of the line NATO ships, some Chamsuris, really great ships at intercepting uh, missiles and all. Uh, a Congo class, uh, I believe it's a battleship, which is the heaviest thing the NATO uh, people get, some air, some uh, and some um, cheapo helicopters to really shore up our defenses here. So start off with this blob, we're gonna be uh, yeah, right in range of the Soviets right away. And it looks like, yeah, missiles are going to be traded over here. Ours going up against theirs. Of course, uh, us having a considerable amount of those um, anti-radar defenses. And let's see whether or not any of those got in here. Oh, yikes. Nevertheless, they managed to um, knock us down by one point over here. So we'll see. Yeah, some of them are, are going to be intercepted. Some of them are going to get in here. From whatever member coming from the uh, the 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 initial like beta phase of the game or something like that when when naval was introduced most of the na most of these naval battles honestly it's um it's more or less a blob v blob type of thing so yeah in this battle i think all we had to do is just simply survive for that 20 minutes so we'll see what we can do about making that happen they're gonna cap mike Probably gonna cap November in a bit. Right now, I just want to buy some of these airplanes. Seeing as how the Red Four Navy inside this game is just incredibly strong on the seas, though we have uh, by far the best uh, airplanes amongst other things. We'll see what we can do there. And I think, yeah, our LCU here will just continuously um, repair the Congo, so it's not that big of a deal. Got to get the Tomcats out. I'm gonna get them patrolling. See whether or not they can perhaps find, say, where these uh, red ship, uh, red four ships are. Found a nice helicopter here, making a run with its two radar-guided missiles. See whether or not we can perhaps get the Tomcat cat to go in here and to do a nice uh, run with his uh, infrared missiles. Yeah, and would you look at that? No, it's gonna swing right by over there. And it's gonna go all the way over there for whatever reason. Either way, ooh, they're getting a MIG on us. Buy another Tomcat because uh, it'd be very, very useful if we had more of these. And would you look at that? We managed to hit him first, so we took out the MIG before his missiles could uh, could either be launched or something along the line. So that, so that's good. One easy kill right there, though. So, yeah, we have uh, three thousand, we're almost four thousand points to grind away at the uh, at the Soviets here. So that's probably not going to happen. And just to recap on 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 the system of how you win these battles, you either have to pick off all of the command units, which are things marked with this uh, little star icon. You can use them to cap these naval sectors, leading, um, uh, rather getting these 
reinforcement routes by air with C, or alternatively generate points, or usually typically both um, there, so that's that. Uh, in addition, you can win, of course, by destroying a set amount of uh, units in their point values here um, within the time frame as well. And I believe you can also win by capping off all of the uh, all of the sectors inside the map. I'm not sure about that note, though. So, yeah, one capital ship over here. Congo's doing well. I think I'll pull it back, though, just slightly. We're starting to build up a lot of points, and I think I'll try to put it at just the edge of Charlie. Hopefully, we'll see whether, whether or not we can perhaps intercept that um, Soviet capital ship. And this is the biggest ship, uh, rather, one of the two biggest ships that the... Um... Oh, yikes, that's not going to be good. Well, we're going to intercept both of those. See whether or not the Tomcats can handle the uh, the two SU planes right there. No, they're gonna. They're not. They didn't miss, but they uh, they weren't able to. So let's see. Hmm. Yeah, but uh, going back to this ship, it is just an absolute uh, monster, really. That thing has huge sort of missiles on it. And the other thing is that it has features very, uh, I believe it's, a, I think it has like exceptional close-in weapon systems, making it all the deadlier. Yeah, no, very good. So not exceptional, but still very, uh, very potent. And in general, I mean, in the previous games, what happened, or in the previous matches that I played with all the naval uh, stuff, for lack of a better term, most of the times it'll be just more or less a blob v blob fight here, because your blobs can, of course, help each other, where your blob of ships can help each other intercept all the missiles and all. And let's see, where are we taking fire? No, we just found another one of their capital ships. So our ships are gonna trade blows here, so that's fine. Main thing though is that we need to buy our Super Hornets, and afterwards things should be going, should be uh, smooth going, seeing as how we can fall the, um, I believe, six missiles at one time at one of these ships, and that should uh, be able to do quite some damage. Here's what I'll do for the Count Tomcats, I'm gonna, I'm gonna send these guys out. If you guys remember, um, aircraft typically have very good air detection, so you'll be able to see aircraft a lot sooner. And I see that they're making, they're rather, they're trying to make some plays with those, um, those SU planes, so I want to keep this thing out. And would you look at that, three out of the four capital ships that they can deploy, mind you, if we pick off some of these, um, Sovereignty class capital ships, uh, later on we won't have to deal with them on the, uh, on the campaign map and perhaps in later battles too. So, um, we're building up points, a nice 36, 136, 143, 146. So it'll take us a short amount of time before we get into that um, that three Super Hornet range. Looks like they're also going to try to mass their ships together. No, Tomcat, don't don't go in there. That is going to be certain death. Yeah, no. That sucks. Oh well, we can buy another Tomcat soon enough. But right now, I want to get the, the Super Hornets ready right now. So, uh, let's see where the rest of their ships are. So they have a few capital ships over here. I'm not sure what they have in Delta, though it'd be, of course, very useful to figure that out. And would you look at that, all of those missiles being intercepted over this uh, splotch of water where they have all of those um, capital ships and all. They're going to move over a helicopter. That's going to get shot down immediately. Oh. Maybe, maybe not. It is just outside our range here. Range for helicopters is 335. That is. Damn. It skirted right by us. Oh well. I guess we'll leave our ship here for now. Let the Congo and their capital ship brawl it out with their main guns. And whoo, they're targeting our supply ships. So, not a bad pick for uh, for targets there. Let's get some of these um, Super Hornets to do their thing, though. I think we'll try to uh, use them to pick off these guys. We're gonna send the wave because there's no way we're breaking out. Holy crap, that's four of those capital ships right there. Send those in. It's going to take both of them out, and hopefully all of our aircraft get out. Tomcat's coming in, though. Ooh, and that is another trade-off. Two for... Yeah, plane, one plane for another plane. Let's see what they're doing now. They're bringing in those Komars. I'm going to pull my fleet back. 
Those Komars, I'm not really sure if we've seen these before, but they're, uh, they're little boats. They carry a whole bunch of these short range. Um, they, they look like, they, they look like missile, or they're, they're said to be missiles, but they look like torpedoes. Um, in short, they do a lot of damage if they hit, but mind you, they have to close in really, really fastly and, uh, yeah, drop their, drop their payload before they die to do that. And, yeah, they, they didn't make it in here. Our, and our Congo here using its main gun is just shower them, showering them with shots. And that thing fires at 30 rounds per minute, so it's uh, it's not bad, especially if it goes against ground units uh, when we have the opportunity to to use it against those. Oh. Super Hornet fleet's ready. We're gonna launch him against that Nanjing. That's gonna be another. That's going to be a, a Chinese capital ship. It's not as deadly, and also carries those uh, Termit missiles as well. Main thing though is that that mythos missile uh, blob is gonna hit and it's gonna smoke it like that. And now we can buy two more Tomcats just like that. Oh, actually, that's why it keeps on spawning over here. Ooh, spotting more of these KAs. they bring over here now they're bringing in their capital ships to the fight I think we'll get the uh, the main fleet over here to make a bit of a run also look like they were running out of supplies so I think we'll buy another one of those ships to help them out here and we'll try to get the Congo to uh, move back to friendly nines we might be able to bait one of those capital ships to uh, to fight us in Charlie perhaps something along the, the lines of that yeah they're gonna get their missile blob out And our guys are doing a fine job inter at intercepting them, so that's nice. Let's get something to intercept that. Uh, we'll get rid of that. Oh, shit. That's not good. Wanted to get rid of that. Uh... Nice. Perfect. Only two of those missiles got through. That was was, uh, was actually better than expected. Let's get these guys to pull back. The thing is that once the Congo runs out of those um, SMMR block twos, it has trouble intercepting stuff, and that's uh, that's obviously something that I don't want to uh, mess with. So we'll get this fleet to pull back. I thought I think we lost yeah one of those um, Chamsuri things, so it's not a terribly big deal. I think we'll park our ships here, and I'm gonna get this fleet to uh, to reorganize slightly. I see that capital ship right there. And you know, that might be a good target for us, so I'm gonna see what the Congo can do about launching some of its uh, missiles here. This might be risky, but I think I'll try it. If we can get this uh, Hornet wave in, that should definitely do quite the amount of damage. That's gonna fire something back at our planes, that's probably gonna do some damage. Looks like we got a few missiles in. But uh, I think our plane took a hit there. Oh, actually, that was only two of the airplanes. So, could have gone better. Ooh, launch, launch. And yikes, the Congo is being lit up over here. It's not... Uh, it's not doing all too well, but it's living. Um, so that's that. It's panicked right now, so it's going to be slower than usual. And it's aiming time and all that. It's going to be uh, weird, but hopefully we can limp it back to Naval Sector Lima over here. Why am I buying all these Chamsu Reeds? I wanted to buy um, another one of these supply ships for now, and we'll just continuously pull back here. We have eight minutes on the clock. Um, so long as we can survive for those eight minutes, we get a lovely... Uh, naval strike force off of the, on, onto the campaign map for surviving for this so that'll be uh, yeah that'll be definitely very very nice so overall yeah we're not, we're we're not doing too bad i mean for a very difficult mission all of our ships were at least the most most of them have survived we did lose two tomcats though but uh, i'd rather have uh, yeah i'd rather have my ships here than one of those perhaps so at least that's good and now, once we get the Congo supplied here, I don't think you can supply these ships in combat, though, so we'll have to wait it for it to, uh, to stop firing, but provided that we can resupply it, that should be uh, very, very good. Oh, uh, 
that is just on on the line between exploding and living here. It's got the Chamsu Reeves in the front. Ooh, they're moving up with those uh, smaller ships as well. They're going to launch a few projectiles too, but those are the slower types. It's got the Chamsu Reeves to set up a defensive line here. They're going to try to do some damage using their <laughs> Captain Killed on Bridge with their small guns here. And the thing here is that I can't pull back the uh, the Congo, or else we lose the uh, the smaller ships here. So I have to keep them. So I, I kind of have to keep them there. Let's see. Two uh two of these fighters. They have a lot of stuff there. I can probably pick off that Nanjing using the two Super Hornets though. That's so overall very difficult. Uh, Mission at the start of things here. Oh, those Komars don't have any close ins. It's not too bad. We might be able to get the uh, the Congo here, snipe off that Nanjing class. It's a it's a it's a medium class ship, I believe. So yeah, the the gun on the Congo should have an easier time hitting it than some of these small Komars. Yeah, it's smacking it, smacking it dead on as well. Just not doing too much damage. This time, I think I'll launch the, uh, the Tomcats before they have the chance to bring in anything. Would you look at that? That is that ship gone. The Congo is luckily being re repaired. At, at least I think, yeah, no, it is the Congo. It's being repaired. It's getting its missile systems refueled or, you know, resupplied, so that's good. And overall, it's keeping itself in the fight, so that's good. Let's get uh, let's get the rest of these Kachamps who re-spot. I really need to get that anti-missile uh, anti system set up. And now, because we have the cash for it, I'm gonna buy uh, a few of these Pegasus class ships with um, with offensive missiles to help us out for the last five minutes here. As long as we can keep those guys alive, I think we'll be good there. Gonna move up their capital ship. Ooh, and that's gonna go into guns range. How's the Congo doing here? It's resupplied its weapons, but it still hasn't healed up fully, so that's not it's not terribly great, but it's not uh, it's better than something. And damn, one of the... Yeah, that logistics ship... Uh, blew up, so as you saw there, it made a big explosion, which uh, I think knocked out at least one of those other ships. Either way, Congo's gonna pull back, we're gonna do a... Uh, well, no, supply ship's still here, so I guess... Uh, yeah, because the ships, they do they do violently explode at the end. And of course that does... Uh, where that, that does... Yeah, that does some damage to the ships around it. Main thing is to just keep the Congo alive, got a quarter of the battle left. See whether or not the Congo can perhaps resupply here. Pegasus and all are coming. So that's not bad. Draw them in, the Nanjing's on fire. And our third Hornet is now repaired, so we'll bring it in. Boom. Got a nice uh, shockwave to it as well. So there, that is yet another ship down. It's not bad, they're gonna bring in their MiG Swarm. I don't want to fight their uh, their MiGs on their turf, though. It's gonna be one trade, uh, or one or one Tomcat for two of their MiGs, hopefully. There we go. Now they're bringing in the SUs. They also have missiles on them. That might be, yeah. That is unfortunately both of our Tomcat or four of our com Tomcats in this battle. Damn. Either way, we're keeping, the, we're keeping the main fleet alive here, so at least that's good. I'm gonna have to pull back the Oliver Hazard parry over here. Let's pull back, let's pull back to the... See what we can do here. I'm going to try to move towards the corner of the map, going to Juliet first. Main thing is that we just have to survive for that those four minutes here, and so long as we do that, everything else is just golden. Congo is just laying it on, on it with those guys, even though it's on fire and all. It's one bar of health left, wow. Gonna see whether or not these uh, Pegasus ships can kill the Nanjin over there. Oh, got a few hits. Let's see. Boom, there we go. Another thing down, we'll get the fleet to regroup here. Looks like we're just going to have to call in everything we have left, really. So let's buy uh, 
Let's buy two of these Oliver Hazard Parries. At least they have some clothes and weapon system, whereas the Pegasus class uh, ships don't. And we'll just ball up our guys here, try to keep them alive. Ooh, we have, I think we have AA on these Super Hornets. Yes, we do. It's one thing down. Is that, it's not going to be two? Nope. Alright, so that, uh, we got one capital ship by itself here. It has a lot of those high accuracy missiles, though. It fires two of them at one time, so I mean, if, uh... So there's a good chance that it'll take it out. It does eight damage, uh, per missile. And planes have ten hit points. I'm all here. Ooh, we actually, yeah, we have a lot of missiles, actually. We could probably them, try to overwhelm the uh, ship over there. Try to over, try to, uh, try to finish off this battle by taking out one of their capital uh, ships here. Pegasus uh, ships and all are in a good location to folly spam this guy. Oh, lots of those missiles are going to go off course, though. Some of them, hopefully some of them are going to hit. Yeah, there, we got one. The shaken now. Hopefully that's two. Come on, I'm waiting for the Super Hornet to be ready. If we time it just right, damn, they're gonna send in their own. Yeah, that's gonna be. Ooh, that that was close. Hey, actually, no hits. If we can just delay right now and get two Super Hornets, that uh, that capital ship is gonna be dead. 50 seconds to do this too. It's a very intense match. At oh yes, don't even need them. That is that thing down. So that's very very good. Right in that case, let's see what we can do about picking off some of these uh, Tarantils. These things are actually fairly vo uh, expensive. They have the the nice musket, very long range, high accuracy, high damage missiles, but they don't have very good AA. So let's um, let's get some of those things sniped off. Oh, they have a tiny blob here, come crescent over the. The ridge here. Let's go for the engine. That one's more valuable. Plus, I think it has a. Well, no, actually, it doesn't have a better missile system on it. Nevertheless, we'll see. Nope. Yeah, that's why you want to blob up the ships, but at the same time, don't stack too many of them inside the same area. And there, last five seconds. Oh. So we managed to live through that, so not bad, not bad. So yeah, both sides are exhausted. Black Knights are unfortunately gone, all of the F-14 Tomcats. And it looks like at the same time, all of their MiGs have been destroyed. So a very, uh, very expensive trade here coming from both sides, though I think it's uh, slightly tilted towards our favor here. We destroyed 19 ships, lost six, lost, let's see, we're no, well, we lost, uh, we lost five ships. We lost, we're no? No, actually, never mind. We lost no Super Hornet, so that's good. Uh, but overall, we managed to win that battle. Little uh, flight plane things get smoked. And, well, the campaign should open up now. So we managed to save the USS uh, Enterprise here. And now, let's see. So North Koreans are moving. Looks like the Russians drew first, but it's only a matter of hours. It looks like we have the opportunity to launch a first attack here. Your system, uh, Let's see, what is this? The units we sent to attack have few chances of surviving. Having said that, they can give us time to provide our to um, stiffen up our defenses. Ooh, this is uh, yeah quite the campaign, folks. So I guess uh, ah, <laughs> you know it's funny we we played three defen we've played two defensive campaigns already, and I guess we're playing yet another one where we had to uh, yeah fight the delay back to um, back to Busan, I guess. Uh, well, I hope you guys enjoyed the first episode of this campaign, and well, going forwards from here, next time we will be uh, starting off with some tough decisions inside, or rather, at the uh, at the DMZ. So I hope to see you guys there. Bye bye for now.